it's just now getting a prime time. I give it a few rattles. Five minutes later, 10 yards from the decoy. Smoked him. Smoked him. This story starts back in the season of 2021. I set out two cameras back on some family land. This has been a spot that I have hunted since 2016, 2017. I've taken a few nice deer off of it, but I have put in the time on this land, and I'm saying that humbly. 2017, I harvested a nice funky buck. And this view is oh, yeah. my favorite. Dude, you gotta come to the house and see him here a little bit. Since then, it's kind of been dry. Like, that's not a place you can go hang cameras and just expect great results. So the season of 2020, this property didn't really get touched much. We're really primarily focusing all of our efforts towards the public land hunting. And shot my first public land buck in 2020 and also the biggest buck of my life. With me being done around November 3rd, didn't really give me a lot of opportunity to hunt this piece. So fast forward to 2021 summer, we were kind of doing the same thing as the year before. We were trying to focus and give all of our effort to the public land hunting once again. But this time, instead of not having any cameras out there like I did in 2020, I decided to hang two out there probably mid-summer sometime. I don't know if if it was because this property didn't get hit as hard with hunting pressure as much or what it might be, but the cameras kind of lit up. It seemed like there was more bucks than does at the time, and there was four in particular that kind of caught my eye. The first two that, that came about, I would consider these my third and fourth hit lister bucks, but one of them was just a nice solid eight. He was pretty heavy horned and a little bit taller than, than I guess the rest of them that was out there. And then the other one had about the same amount of mass, but he was just wide. He was a nice wide deer. But those aren't the ones I was really after on that property. I had two 10 points. One was just a nice, he looked three years old. He was probably a three year old, mid 120s, 10 point. My number one target buck for that season, on that property at least, was this nice wide 10 point. He had nice tines. He had decent mass and he had really really good eye guards about halfway through october uh, christian had a wedding to attend to so we just decided to take it easy one weekend for for good reasons because like i said before we weren't really having much luck on public with at least seeing them and i stayed home and hunted that piece of private i was like okay i haven't checked the camera let's just go out there check the camera and hunt while we do it while i was out there I checked the camera and seen a group of doe that seemed like they were coming in at clockwork every single evening. So I was like, you know what? I might smack me one of those. And they all come out and as soon as I see the first head, it immediately locks eyes with me inside of the blind. And so I gotta sit there all still like, you know, just like everybody does. One comes out, the next one comes out, the next one comes out. It's like five or six does. And when I say, they didn't like what they seen. They did not like what they seen. I kind of picked me out one that was giving me the most hard time. This one w was probably at one point, 20 yards from my blind, just staring at me and just stomping. And I was like, you're the one I want. So she kind of moseys back on uh, over there to the corn and the whole time her butt's kind of facing towards me. And so she finally steps broadside, I draw back and about that time, another deer kind of gets in her way a little bit. And I was like, well, it's just an unfortunate day for you. Fast forward to November, we're headed to our rutcation on the Oklahoma public land that we take annually. We, we've gotten a lot of trail camera pictures. We spent three weekends out there in the summer just finding good spots, hanging cameras, coming back a month later, checking them, and then just trying to resituate them. And for some people, they were really successful. Christian ended up getting one. A couple of our buddies that, that we, we share camp with, they were on them. Me and Carol were struggling though. We were seeing them, but we just couldn't make it happen because I was hooked to a spot. It was the same spot. I killed both my bucks in 2020. 
so I was like, you know what, this spot's a nice bench on a on a ridge. It's it's just a great spot, so why not hunt it again? I heard a single set of footsteps coming from behind me, and so I immediately got ready, turned on the GoPro, turned on the main camera, and I was like, okay, it's gonna happen. Like this has to be a buck, because there's a lot of times there's not a lot of doe traveling alone there. And about 35 yards. I see a nice, he's probably, he has to be in the 120s, just a nice solid buck, 35 yards to, to the left of me. And I'm already ready, I got my bow in my hand. I already had him in frame, was getting good footage of him, but I unclipped my release and tried to zoom in on him a little bit more, just, just get a little bit better footage of the shot. But by doing that, it gave him enough time to start walking again. And as he was walking, he ended up catching up one of my trails that I usually don't take in. I usually take a completely different route, but just this day, I took this specific trail in just because uh, weeks before, we've gotten pictures of some gnarly black bears down there, and it seems like year by year, they get bigger and bigger, so I don't know why. I decided that other trail would keep me safe or something along those lines, but just at the time, that, that's what I was thinking put his head down, started sniffing, and then raised his head up and just started like kind of looking around like, okay, I smell you, what is this? And at this point, he's probably 35, 40 yards maybe. And I can't shoot him because I have one twig that's covering up his vitals. It, it ain't a very big twig. I might've, I might've been able to miss it. I didn't want to take that risk because I thought he was just gonna stop and then continue on his normal route. And again, that would have put him out in front of me in the open and I could have stopped him at any point. So come back home that same weekend on the Sunday and frustrated wise, I was like, I just want to see some deer. So I decided to go out there to that piece of property in that same blind where I shot that doe previously. While I was out there, I seen the two nice eight points, which would be my three and four on the hit list. Seeing them out there, they were probably two, 300 yards away from me, just out out in this field. I rattled at them, grunted at them. They were hearing me and they were looking my way, but they just weren't really interested. My thinking was, okay, what if I move my blind closer? And then, so where they came out at, maybe if I moved closer, that would put me in the ball game. So I worked all that next week and I didn't, I wasn't able to get out there until the 11th. And so somewhere in between one evening after work, I ran out there, positioned my blind an extra 200 yards closer, still within the thicket and set up shop there and that would give them a couple more days just to get used to it if they did use the field again. Coming out there the evening of the 11th, I, was, I got to thinking, I was like, well, if they were really intrigued in the rattling, because I think that's why the two bucks showed up in the first place, was because while I was out there, I rattled. And as I rattled, that's when one of the hit listers walked out, and then I rattled again trying to get him in closer, and that's when another one stepped out, and then also had two little four corns in there. But I was like, okay, if they're, if they're responding to rattling, why not try to bring a decoy out here? And I don't have a traditional decoy, so to speak, but what I do have is an old boss buck target that me, Christian, and Peyton all shot in college. And this thing isn't in the greatest shape. Uh, it might have a leg missing and the legs might have holes in it, like those arrow holes. And it's just, it's just an old beat up target. So I was like, you know what, if I can drag that thing out there and prop it up at least, maybe it, maybe it might work. Maybe it might fool them enough where they, they'll make a mistake. So that's what I did. Set up the decoy and make sure I spray it, spray it down super well within a way. I'm usually not a big scent guy, but in this case, I have my hands all over it. And especially if a doe might come out before a buck and, and uh, check it out, I, I, I just wanna be sure and I give it a few rattles. And I rattled once before this, and I kind of sat back and not 
five minutes later, I don't see the deer, but I hear something walking, it sounds like. And so I just kind of lean up in my seat a little bit and peek, and I just see this buck kind of walking the edge of this creek. Smoked them, smoked them, smoked them, smoked them, smoked them, smoked them. Boys. Boys. Okay, there he is. There he is right there. There he is right there. I smoked him. 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 So there's the decoy. He's right in front of the decoy. Boys. How come I couldn't get on him fast enough? Didn't go. Yeah, he's right. He's right there. Smoked. Smoked. I ranged the decoy. The decoy is at 20 yards. The decoy was at 20 yards. The decoy was at 20 yards, and he was a little bit behind the decoy. I didn't range him. I was like, it's close enough. I pin gapped him 20, 30. Freaking double him. Let's go. Let's go. You better be calling me for the right reason. Oh, you know I am. What's up? Oh... About two minutes ago, I had a, I had a nice buck come to the decoy, shot him at 25 yards, and he ran about 50 yards and piled up. You're lying. I swear to God. Which buck? Don't know. I don't think it's either of them. Did he come right to the decoy? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. On yeah. Well, he like tried to tried to wind it first, and I sprayed the crap out of it with sin away. Uh, and. Uh, Are you lying? I swear to God, got it all on video. No, listen, I didn't get him coming in because, like, the decoy is only 20 yards away from me, and I didn't want to move very much, but uh, as, as soon as he got in frame, I let him walk about another five yards. He started bristling up, and, and like, like, and uh, I stopped him. Uh, I pin-gapped him because the decoy was at 20, he was, like, a little bit behind him, and so I did for 25, double-lunged him, and... He got to, he, he ran about 30 yards, started mule kicking, and then fell like 50 yards. Let's go, dude. Oh yeah. my god. That's sick. Oh my god. I think you would. Oh, I know. I know. We just gotta give you one more. I'm ready to film. After I shot him, he did kind of like a bunny hop mid stride, and as soon as he did that, I knew it was over. I assume you, you could hear it on the footage. I kept saying, smoked him, smoked him. And at that point, my emotions just took over. So I guess I said smoked him 20 times at least. He didn't make it into the thicket. He expired right there at the edge of the field. After hunting that hard on public, it just, it just felt nice to go out there, see deer, and actually get it done. The dang thing fell up with a stick. The legs freaking basically snapped off. Well, it is broke. I had to run another stick through just to keep the leg on it. Held up by a stick, run through that stick. He wasn't either one of those. He's a nice buck though. Look at that. I don't know if I'm gonna give him more time or not. Obviously not, but. Moral of the story here is use what you got because it'll probably work. I walk up to the buck. I'm beyond excited. This is my first ever buck trying to use a decoy. I know this this deer wasn't one of my hit listers, right? Like obviously because it was a brand new buck, but out of all of them, it means a lot to take deer from, from this piece of property just because uh, it used to be my grandpa's land. He passed away a few years ago from cancer. This piece of property 
allowed me to really explore and learn the ins and outs of whitetail hunting. And in a way, I think it kind of gave me the mindset of how I think about hunting today. It kind of instilled that passion into me. The biggest thing I probably learned about this season, uh, it didn't really have anything to do with this specific deer, but from hunting this piece from like 2017 to 2019 pretty hard to not hunting it at all in 2020 from focusing uh, more on the public land. I think just by giving this piece of property a break, at least from me, we were seeing a lot more deer on camera and we were seeing a lot more deer on, on hoof and just not just deer in general, they were nice, big, mature bucks too. So my biggest piece of advice for someone who thinks they should be seeing good quality deer or maybe have in the past but not so much anymore, that might be something to look into is how are you hunting it? Are you doing more harm than good with your management strategies? Are you going in there every other week and putting out corn? Like things like that. And that kind of opened my eyes pretty big. And even though this is a pretty highly pressured ground and the surrounding area is pretty highly pressured, it kind of opened my eyes to how patience and overall how less is more. Be sure to give this video a like and hit that follow button and be sure to ring that bell notification as well and it will notify you the next time we post a video. And if you guys want to support us further at the Hunter's Advantage, go to our website, check out our merch. We got, we got hats, we got camo, we got all blacked out. By the time you all see this video, we will have t-shirts up on there. So nonetheless, have a good day. Jesus loves you and we'll catch you on the next one.